All right, guys, welcome back. It's been a little while since I filmed anything. Uh, had a long trip and haven't just haven't gotten around to filming anything again. And uh, I will be working on the Mustang, which is right over there very soon. I got to pick up some stuff for it. But for right now, I'm going to talk about this generator. Now, while I was gone, um, you know, Texas had some minor issues for about two days for the most part. And we did, you know, a few people didn't have power at home. I was told our power went off about 10 o'clock in the morning, or I'm sorry, about 6 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I was called and said, you know, how do I start the generator and all that kind of fun stuff. And the story is basically she got this generator out there and this thing is heavy. It's, it's a heavy beast. She hauled it out of the garage, got it out there, and she couldn't get it to start. She messed with it a little bit, wouldn't start. And... Uh, she did good. I have no complaints there. However, I didn't have things set up well enough for her to make it easier for her. So that's what I'm working on. And it did start for me on the first try. It just didn't have enough gas in it. But anyway, uh, <laughs> what I'm going to be doing is putting a new carburetor on it, which is in this box right here. This is a tri-fuel carburetor. It will run on gasoline, propane, or natural gas. Um, and I picked up a, sorry about that, and I also picked up a propane regulator, which I wasn't really looking for it. I uh, just happened to be on clearance at Lowe's. Um, this is in a 11, 11 inch water column uh, regulator, which is what you generally need for these generators. It's a very common uh, low pressure but if you're going to do this and buy it separately, read the instructions, find out what you need, buy a complete kit if you have to. There are kits that come with uh, basically automotive type materials, very large regulators, uh, just bulletproof type of stuff. But it is quite a bit more expensive to go that route versus the generator or small engine specific stuff. But um, so 13 bucks on clearance. That was a good deal. So. I'm going to get into, we're going to open this up, take a look at it, see what's in here, and uh, see what it's going to take to put on here. Okay, so that's what I bought. Whether it's the right thing or not, we'll find out. And uh, since everybody loves unboxings for some reason, I'll rip it open in front. Unfortunately, I'm not, uh, I, I don't have one of those really cool chainsaws, you know, for doing a proper unboxing. Maybe one of these days. Okay, let's see what kind of goodies we got in here. Okay, you guys just make sure you guys can see that. Oh, I got some gaskets. Let's see, a nice little injection molded uh, spacer with a vacuum port. Uh, carburetor. Another spacer and a new choke lever because I'm guessing it's different. And there's a screw in there for something. Well, I guess we'll figure that out. So for now, we'll just put all that back in here. We don't want to, we don't care about that. We want to see the cool part, which is this little guy right here, which is quite a bit larger than I had expected it to be, in fact. So, hope it fits. All right. Now, to get the carburetor off, just take that cover off, air filter out. And this air filter is original to this. Um, I do need a new piece of foam to put in here. And I would like to upgrade this to an actual paper air filter, but I don't know if that exists. But uh, I'll see about that in the future. All right. So... I'll move you guys for just a second. Now, over here, now you can see there's a little metal piece. I'm going to take that out of there. And then there is a 10 millimeter nut here. And then, I'll put you back over here. There is another one over in here. So you need to remove both of those. And there is also another one on the back side over here. I'm going to take you guys off so you can see that. 
Okay, so this is the one out here, the other one here, and there's a third one on this little bracket back here in the dark. Sorry, I don't have any really good lighting, so yeah, it's kind of how it goes. But you'll have to take all three of those off and that one is going to be an eight. Tonight. Okay, so we've got a couple hoses on here. They've got to come off. This one is just pushed on right here. And it comes right out. In fact, probably don't even have to take it all off, just hang it out of the way. But for clarity's sake, we'll move it. Just for the sake of you guys watching, we'll move it. Come on. All right. Okay, so there's all that. There's all those goodies there together. Now, you're probably just looking at this bar here. All right, well, that's as good as I can get you guys in here. I'm just fighting with uh, not being able to see anything. You not be able to see anything. Tripod's too short. Just all that kind of fun. Okay, so what we're going to start with, and I'm going to turn you over here, is we need to unplug these guys right here. This is the solenoid shutoff for the carburetor. It shuts the fuel off. And I just need to unplug those. Okay. These use these little bullet connectors, which I absolutely hate these style of connectors. They are not very good. Some car companies used to use them on cars, and they were bad back then. And for some reason, we still use them on trailers, which we always complain about why trailer lights have issues. And uh, that's a big part of it right there. We use bad connectors still. Okay, so this has got little snappy loodly thingies here and, you know, reach in there, squeeze it, pop it out. I'm not going to show that. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. We've got, let's, before we do anything else, let's do a quick uh, comparison here. Uh... Okay, that's a good sign. They, they, it mounts. The holes are in the same spot. Good sign. So essentially, this is going to go on here. And actually, that makes a really good side-by-side -side comparison right there. Because if I get... Yeah, this is what you guys are on. Yes, yeah, because, you know, not a film guy. I mean, just a guy that builds things. Filming, not my thing. Okay. So that was a good shot of side-by-side uh, -side of what we're going to be going from and to. Um, essentially, it is basically the same carburetor in a lot of ways. From here up, the bowl is different. Um, come back in over here. Let's get this hoose out of the way. Okay. And we've got here, you can see this is the regulator down here. There's a valve on the regulator as well. And there's a fitting down here, which that fitting I'm going to have to change point a different direction and all that kind of fun um, but that's okay but it looks like we're going to fit and also if you didn't know this little screw here is to drain the fuel out of the bowl of the carburetor so when you're running these generators you, you let it sit when you're done using it run it out of gas and then run that screw out and drip out what you can and this one has the same one over here same same but uh, so we've got this little nipple here to that hose there. Um, yeah, that's about it. Everything else looks pretty similar. Uh, this little piece here for the throttle is looks identical. Choke is uh, very similar, if not almost exactly the same, just slightly different spring configuration. Yeah, just slightly modified to uh, run the propane and natural gas through it.
So I will get that off and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, uh, I have popped this gas line off. I just put it up here to get it out of the way. Um, these little things here, I just kind of wiggle them back and forth. They popped right out. I assumed I was going to have to go to the back side and squeeze them, but uh, they actually popped right out. So that came out nicely. So the next step is we're going to wiggle just a hair. I don't remember if these are actually a bolt-in type on this one or not. Some of these, you, sometimes you have to actually put two nuts on these and spin these out to get them off. I don't think I have to do that on this one. Though. Ah, there we go. Okay. Okay, so now we are loose. We just pull this all the way out. Now, you'll have to watch because I, a friend of mine had a mower shop years ago. Used to help that. Uh, some carburetors will have multiple holes for the springs and multiple holes for the throttle lever. Make sure if you have more than one, take a picture. In this case, we just have the one, so not really a big deal. So let's just do it this way then. Okay. So that is the old carburetor there. And just a second here, I'll set up and do side by side with the new one. Really? Okay. Now, as you can see, I've got them side by side here. There are some differences. You know, but obviously there's more to this one. But essentially, you can see that you've got... Let's peel this off of here if it'll come off. Peel this gasket off. You can uh, take a look at the holes in the carburetor. See if they match up or not. So now, little things you want to make sure of anytime you swap a carburetor is make sure these little... Little holes like that little square hole here. You've got that here. You've got it here. You've got that round hole. You've got that one there. Make sure all these little holes line up because there are different things. It's different carburetors have different bypasses for air for different uses and purposes. But just kind of make sure that they're generally in the same area. Now you'll notice that uh, there's a difference in the uh, choke blade here. That this one has a cutout across it. This one does not. And that is probably because of the uh, using the gas. Just the difference there. Is this one here a little, a little more air through when it uh, full choke closed than this one will? Which that does make sense when you're using the gas. But essentially, that's kind of what's going on here. Let me see. Here's the side of it here. You can kind of compare some things if you'd like. There's the other side. Yeah, same drill there with the holes. They all look pretty much identical. And we'll come back over to this side here. Get my fingers out of the way. And again, pretty much uh, identical. It just has the uh, uh, addition of the, uh, the uh, gas. Now, what I've noticed is this is kind of interesting is this is a H-U-A-Y-I. Not sure who they are. I'm assuming that is a Chinese company, possibly Taiwanese. I do not know, but I did find something interesting right here is, you'll see this actually says this is a SBD carburetor designed in Japan. Um, yeah, just something to note. So uh, next I will figure out which of these spacers have got to go on and all that kind of goodies and uh, get some stuff figured out and then I'll come back. Now, I have pulled this off of here. I just pulled the hose out, slid it off the pins, and uh, you see there's a sloppy gasket on that side. Doesn't quite line up very well. This side here, we do have one with a hole. Looks like there might be a passage back there. I'm not entirely sure just yet. Um, obviously, I, I'm pretty sure I know why that's there. Now, our new kit comes with two. Now, if you notice, there are some little differences to it. Um, 
One thing you will want to do is, you see that little piece of flash in there? That's, uh, that's ugly. That needs to be smoothed out. But anyway, basically, they're exactly the same, I would say, without really getting into it. The only difference is this one has a port for vacuum for something. This may be like a California model that has a, uh, there are actually some engines have charcoal canisters on them like cars. So that could be what that is. But uh, we don't need that one. So we just need this one right here, which is identical to uh, the original. And we will, I'm going to clean up the casting flash in there. It's not a big deal. Um, I will say the factory one is perfect. There is no flash, no seam. Obviously, it's just made differently than this one here. So I will clean this up. I'm going to get the gaskets out, lined up, and we will start putting it on. The gaskets we'll be using are going to be this one here, which matches this one here. And then on this side here, we will be using this one here with that little dog ear on it. And I have, cannot keep things in the frame. Uh, so that's the closest one we have to there because the other one goes on the carburetor itself. So let me uh, clean up these little burrs here and uh, we'll get back to it. Okay, I just pushed these off with my fingers. They popped right off. So all I'm doing is just taking a, uh, a razor blade and just uh, scraping the rest of that off. That's all it takes on this one here anyway. Just a tiny little bit. But I would tell you, make sure that if you are doing this kit, check for these burrs because that piece came off extremely easily just with me. Just I just pushed it and I'm wearing gloves. And it popped right off. So you don't want that falling off and going inside your engine. So that's the only thing I'd say so far that I do have an issue with on this kit is going to be that piece there. You know, a little piece of flashing in there. Other than that, I don't really have any issues so far. But that's something that you really need to watch because you don't want that getting sucked in your engine. Okay, so now getting this ready for the new one. And you'll notice, you see, there's a little bit of gasket material left on here. You want to make sure you clean all that off. And for that, I like using a single-edge razor blade, a brand new one every time. And then just very lightly go to a very, very shallow angle and just gently take it off of there you do not want to scratch the aluminum and uh, that would be bad just makes it harder to seal so yeah that goes like that okay so our this gasket goes here the hole and this gasket is going to go right here. So we can go ahead and just slip that right on there. And, and I believe this is actually Bakelite. It's what it feels like. It does not feel like plastic. It feels much more like a Bakelite material. So that's all into place. Now I'll get you over here and I'll show you how to put the choke lever on the carburetor. Now, there was a seemingly extra screw. It's not extra. It's not loose. It didn't fall off of anything. Gasket did. Essentially, that is going to be our choke lever once I turn this around the right direction. So our choke lever basically sits on top on that shaft right there. And there is a little slot inside there. I'll get you super close in. Yep. Super close in, you can see there's a little pin on that. So basically just line that up and one way or the other, there we go. It has a uh, notch in it. As I set, click, 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 click. And that's what the screw is for. It just goes right on top of there. So there you go. All right, let's try that again, because I seem to not be able to keep anything even remotely close to being in frame. So, I've gone through all of my bits and pieces and all of my stuff, and essentially I need to go from 
this uh, you know three eighths flare to that. Um, I th believe that this is actually pressed into here, not threaded into there by looking at it because there's a, a flange all the way around there. I will inspect that a little further, but I have a feeling that it's actually pressed into there. If it is, basically got to leave it, but I will have to come up with something that will adapt from the, uh, the hose, which has the, uh, you know, the other fitting of this and get to this fitting here. It, regulator was a good deal. Can't pass it up. So now we'll just go ahead and finish up the install for now. We'll uh, worry about the, let's put that back on there so we won't get dirt in there. And uh, we'll get it installed on here and we'll take care of the hose later. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and install this onto the engine. First of all, we will take, the spring was the last to come off, is the first to go on. So it will go in this little hole right here. And a little rod will come around into that hole. You see, it's got a nice little slot, goes right in there. And then around everything and fight everything. Come on. And yeah. Okay, now we're lined up. Yep. Yeah. Now we're on. Here's our factory. Here's our replacement gasket. Factory gasket is actually a little better gasket. But uh, we're using a new gasket this time. So that little guy goes right on there. And our wires are going to go up and over, around over here. And we will just remove the little clips from the other side, from the old one. I just, these just bend right around, so pull them off the old one. So uh, you just kind of uh, bend them around like that. There's that one. We'll put this one about down here, probably out of frame. You get the idea. And then we'll come back over here while you guys are bouncing around on there. We'll go ahead and plug this back in. It only plugs in one way. So. All right, that's there. And then we will just. Uh, Kind of put these little guys, snap that into place, and uh, snap that into place. Pull this back just a little bit, flop that that way. You don't want that getting near the pull start in case you actually use the pull start. So essentially that is the carburetor installed. The only thing I have not hooked up, other than I don't have gas going in this yet because I need the right fittings for it for my particular regulator. I do not have that at the moment. You see, here's our choke, it does work. But my gas line is not hooked up and I am not gonna hook that up yet right now because I wanna drain what little gas is out of there. I want to flush it, I wanna clean it out. I wanna have a nice, perfectly clean tank before I dump any gas into there. Just on the off chance that there might've been something in the little gas can, you know, a little bit of water, old gas, whatever. Don't want to chance it going into the new carburetor. All right. Uh, I'm at the point where I have uh, the carburetor fully installed. It's on here. I've uh, run the hose temporarily back up and around here and up to here. Um, I don't know where it's going to end up permanently because I want to put some bigger axles on this, some bigger tires and put a pivoting axle up here and be able to tow it behind the mower at some point uh, because it just makes life easier being able to move that way because moving this thing with this and these little tires is is not easy so basically this is just uh, the hose here that you've got to run to your regulator now the trick is with this is this 90 that's in here does not come out it is pressed into this regulator it's pressed in, it's glued in, doesn't turn. Unfortunately, it's pointing at pretty much almost exactly the worst direction it can be other than directly at the airbox. I mean, if it was this way, if it was that way, if it was that way, it would be way better. But no, it's just in a bad position. So 
you just got to deal with it. So this is kind of where I'm at now. Now, uh, I spent a few minutes here. I made this little simple little, just a little 90 degree bracket. Uh, there is a quarter inch, uh, I think it's quarter inch or three inch, uh, you know, pipe plug welded to that. This is powder coated. I have a powder coater, so I'm going to use it. And it's quicker than painting because it's done. I don't have to wait for it to dry. Um, temporarily, I am using, yes, I know, these are pneumatic air fittings for airlines. These are temporary until I, I've got some uh, actual gas ones on order because I want to use this on natural gas as well as propane. They use the same fittings, quick disconnects. I just don't have them right now. So temporarily just for, you know, hey, it works kind of thing. I'm using just standard air fittings on it right now. Uh, so basically to hook this up, all you have to do is pull this back and there's your hose. Now, the point of this is that okay even with a propane one you've got the same deal you got a hose you can get dirt and crap in there you don't want to do that so what i did was i made this bracket put this on here so when you're done with it you can just put that away and boom keeps it dry keeps the dirt out keeps the bugs out and it's all ready to go so basically all we do is take do this and uh We'll be back and I'll show you me show me starting it after I also show that the fact that this is the gas valve. It goes in there. I've got it out because I'm trying to draw. I, I flushed everything out of the gas tank and the valve. I want it to all dry out. The cap is still on the fuel line that where the fuel line would go. So, yeah, there's no gasoline hooked up to it. So it really is running off of propane when I start it up here in a few minutes. Okay, so at this point, all I've got to do is take my propane hose and a hose that feeds the regulator, clip them together. And because it's warm, I'm going to leave this on run because it's 75 degrees. Yeah, it's not too below zero anymore. It only lasts for a day or two, then it's warm again. So on the side here, there's a prime. I'm not going to use that right now just because I want to see if it starts right off the bat. So make sure it's on. It didn't start, so I'll give it a little prime. And we'll choke it halfway. And there you have it, $28 for a carburetor. I pay 13 bucks for a regulator, and yes, I know they're normally gonna be more than that. I got it on clearance, it was a great deal. But 50 bucks runs off of propane, a few bucks more. I get the right fittings here. You'll be able to run off of natural gas as well. Can't beat that. Uh, if I do another video on this, I will, talk, I will do about the uh, undercarriage I'm gonna add to this, make it roll around better. And also show the uh, battery hookup I have to hook up to the mower to start it with the mower battery instead of battery on this itself.